Hey guys, welcome to my channel. We are reading Monster High and Monster Rescue. Go get Laguna. We are reading chapter 11 and 12. 12 is the last chapter, so yeah. Um, here we go, I guess. It's not bad, though. It's a good book. All right. Chapter 11. Ah, the ghouls screamed as they jumped out of the way. The cool mist felt freshing on their faces. How did you do that? Cleo asked in amazement. This isn't an ordinary silver stick, Frankie explained. It's a copper core that conducts electricity that helps it find water. And with a little extra power, it can dig straight down until it reaches the water source underground. We would have built statues to you back in the ancient Egypt, Cleo marveled. Grab your canteens, ghouls. Claudine said, let's fill them up. The ghouls drank their fill of water. Cleo and Frankie had found. Despite the heat of the day, the water was surprisingly cold and refreshing. It must have been really far underground, Cleo said as she paused to refill her canteen. That's such a crazy thought, Dracolora said. It's so dry and dusty up here. But all of this fresh water was flowing just beneath the surface. Let's climb back up to the ridge. Then we can figure out what to do next, Claudine suggested, as she splashed some water on her face. Back on the ridge, the girls watched as the fountain slowed. I wish this ridge were high enough that we could see the ocean from here, Dracolora said. At least then we'd know if we're heading in the right direction. But we, could, we should have just charged off, Claudine spoke up. What if we go the wrong way and end up deeper into the outback? We could even, we could get even more lost and our full canteen, canteens will last us only so long. Frankie reminded them. Dracolora turned to her. Frankie, she began, what about your invention? Do you think it can lead us to the ocean? Well, sure, I guess, Frankie replied. Deep in thought, the only problem is that we wouldn't really know if it was leading us to the ocean until we got there. It could lead us to a total different water source. Is that the the is that the worst thing that could happen? Claudine asked. At least we could fill our canteens again. I wonder if what Dracolora asked. There was a look of deep curiosity of Claudine's face. Like she was trying to figure something out. And Dracolora couldn't wait to hear what her ghoul friend had to say. Do you think it's possible the cyclone left the trail when it crossed over land? Claudine asked. What if we could find any sign of it? We could follow the trail. It would lead us right back to the ocean. That's possible, Frankie said. Most of the time, tropical cyclones will fizz out when they reach land. But sometimes the clouds and high winds can travel over land for hundreds of miles. I know, Dracolora explained. If we find a trail to follow, even a couple signs or clues, we can use Frankie's invention to c confirm that we're heading the r in the direction of the water. Voltatious. Frankie cheered as she gave Dracolora a high five. Let's split up, Claudine suggested. I mean... We should always stay in sight, but we can cover more ground if we move in different directions. And every few minutes, we can yell our names so we know we're all nearby. I have a question, Cleo spoke up. What kind of clue exactly are you talking about? Well, clumps of seaweed, for starters, Frankie replied. Broken branches or unrooted plants might be the sign that the tropical cyclone passed over them. Sometimes a cyclone can even make a rain of fish over land. What? Cleo bursted out loudly. The other ghouls looked at her and she grinned. Sorry, ghouls. It didn't rain fish where I grew up. It was desert. It didn't rain, period. The four ghouls all bursted out laughing and then sighed, enjoying the relief. 
Honestly, I wouldn't mind a fish rainstorm if I could show if it could show us how to get back to Great Barrier Reef. Claudine replied, "Good luck, ghouls. Remember, there's no clue too small." The ghouls split up, each exploring a different side of the basin, basin that was still filling with water. At first, Dracolora saw nothing but dust, dirt, and scrubby little plants. The earth was so dry, she and her ghoul friends didn't even leave footprints, apart from the sound of the water flowing through the fountain. The outback was eerie, quiet. Every few minutes, the ghouls would call to one another, their voices echoing off the dusty landscape. Suddenly, a shriek of excitement pierced the silence. Ghouls, I found something, Cleo cried. Dracolora ran to the other side of the basin, where she found Cleo holding several long strands of delicate seagrass, and they were still damp. These must be from the Great Barrier Reef, Dracolora explained, and the only possible explanation is that the cyclone carried them here. Frankie finished for her. Frankie grabbed her invention and said, Come on, let's go. But which direction? asked Claudine. I'm not exactly sure, Frankie admitted. We might have some false starts, but at least we know the cyclone passed over this side of the basin. If my invention starts getting us to a strong signal of water, we'll know we're going the right way. And if it doesn't, asked Cleo, then I guess we'll have to backtrack and try a different direction. Frankie replied. She started rubbing her hands together again so that she could give the silver stick an even more powerful charge. A small worry frown, frown across Dracolora's face. It was the worst plan, but there was still a lot that could go wrong. But what other option did they have? Judging from the uneasy silence, the other ghouls seemed to share her concerns. They walked on on for several feet before Dracolora finally spoke. Any sign from your invention, Frankie? Frankie nodded. It's definitely picking up on underground water, she replied. I really think we're on the right track. That's fantastic, Dracolora said. I'm kind of worried about how far we are from the ocean. It could take us days to walk that far. Days? Claudine repeated. I don't, I don't think of that. I didn't think of that. What are we going to eat? Cleo wondered. Dracolora started at the barren landscape all around them to shook their head. I honestly don't know, she replied. We'll have to... Hey, what's up? What's that? The ghoul followed Dracolora's gaze to another side of the bison where the dusty clouds had appeared. As they watched, the clouds grew larger and closer. That looks like a sandstorm, Cleo said. We, ha we have them all the time in the desert. Strong winds pick up the sand, blow it so hard that you can't see anything at all. Really makes a mess of your eyeliner when you get all the sand in your eyes. Maybe it's a dust storm, Frankie suggested. Oh no, not another storm, Claudine groaned. My hair may not recover, may never recover. I'm not sure it's a storm, Jackalora said. I don't feel any wind. Not even a little breeze. Neither do I, Frankie said. Then what could it be? asked Cleo. Dracolora squinted, trying to look better for a better look. Suddenly, she became aware of something. The ground. It was trembling. Rimbles formed. In the little lake, shimmering with every pulse p motion that shook the ground, if she didn't know better, she thinks she heard of Prumbies. Dracolora yelled. The other ghouls turned to her. Brum what? Asked Cleo. Looked puzzled. Dracolora was beaming. Brumbies are wild horses and graze in the outback, she explained. They must have seen the fountains sprung up. So you think they come to drink water? Cleo said. Yes, Dracolora replied. And hopefully they'll be our rides. The ghouls watched in silence, hardly daring to move. As dozens of beautiful horses approached the pool, as the dust settled and majestic creatures bent their long necks and drank deeply from the cool, clear water, there were black brumbies and brown brumbies, brumbies of color of honey and dabbled 
Brumbies with molted spots. Some Brumbies are tamer than others, Dracolora whispered, and the other ghouls. Over the years, the, um, domesticated horses would sometimes escape from ranches or farms. They form wild herds in the outback and have lived freely ever since. But according to the Wundas of Down Under, some of them still remember their training. So now we knew what we have to do, Frankie whispered. Figure out which brumbies are still tame and hitch a ride back to the Great Barrier Reef. Without spooking the wild ones and making the whole herd gallop away like a bunch of weir pups, add Claudine. They seem pretty calm right now, said Dracolora. Let's try to approach them. Remember, slow and steady, no sudden movement. Lesson number one of Monster Rescue. No sudden movements, ever, joked Claudine. The ghouls tried to sniffle their laughter for a moment before Cleo interrupted. Okay, ghouls, focus. Staying low to the ground, the ghouls crept towards the Brumbies. Dracolora couldn't take her eyes off the herd. If there weren't so much at the stake, she would have been perfectly happy just to watch them. But the ghouls had to get back to the ocean, and sooner the better. A brumby near the edge of the herd looked up from the water and caught Jackalora's eye. It tilted his head to the side as Jackalora and the brumby gazed at each other. When Jack inched forward, the brumby didn't move away. It didn't even flinch. That's encouraging, Jackalora thought. She continued to move closer until she was a few inches away. Then she gradually extended her arm palm up towards the brumby. Jackalora held her breath as she waited to see how the Brumby would respond. Would it rear back? Would it gallop away? The Brumby blinked with his big eyes, big brown eyes, then leaned down and sniffled Jackalora's hand. Jackalora rubbed the Brumby's nose and scratched the white star-shaped mark between its eyes. Then she gestured for Cleo, Claudine, and Frankie to find their Brumby. Jack was grateful that her ghouls were being so cautious. If the herd panicked and bolted when they were so close to, succeed, to success, it would be a castor off. Soon, Cleo and Claudine found a pair of tame brumbies. Just Frankie was left, but she was a dis at a disadvantage. Her supercharged invention was still crankling, and it made all brumbies anxious. Dracolora understood why Frankie didn't want to stash the invention in her backpack. Keeping it close was best for the ghouls to know if they were on the right route to the ocean. But the stick prevented Frankie from riding the Brumby to the coast. They'd have no choice but to put her invention away and hope they were heading in the right direction. Dracolora watched Frankie approach a great Brumby with the gleaming black mane. The Brumby took one look at the silver stick, snorted, and bolted away. When Frankie looked over at Dracolora and shrugged helplessly, Dracolora knew exactly what she had to do. She gestured at the invention, then pointed at Frankie's bag. Frankie nodded and showed up as she understood. She hid the silver stick, then approached another Brumby, and this one let her get close. Dracolora smiled, and then she started stroking Brumby's mane. Do you think you could give me a ride? Dracolora asked. She had no idea if the Brumby could understand her, but it seemed polite to ask. Then the Brumby still didn't bolt. Dracolora hosted herself onto its back. After the ghouls had mounted their Brumbies, Dracolora nodded at them. It was time to go. Can you take us to the ocean? Dracolora asked the Brumby whiskered softly in response. Dracolora pressed her knees pressed her knees against the Brumby's side and held on tight. The Brumby must have remembered what to do when somebody ri wanted to ride. It seemed reared back on its hind legs, then started galloping across the outback. Dracolora shrieked with glee as her hair streamed behind her. Drac could feel her heart beating in the time of the Brumby's thundering hoofs. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw Cleo first. 
and then Claudine, then Frankie, all holding on it tightly, and Draculaura could tell, smiling, just as broadly as she was, writing a wild brumby. Through the dramatic landscape of the outback was an adventure of the ghouls who remember, who remember forever. For nearly two hours, the ghouls rode the brumbies as the blazing sun crossed the sky. Gradually, the landscape changed and the plants grew taller and greener. There were signs of other creatures, cocktails and rabbits, snakes and lizards, uh, dingoes and kangaroos. And eventually, the dusty red dirt gave away something else, soft golden sand. Jack Laura could hear the ocean before she could see it. The roar of the waves made her even more excited. They were back on the track at last. When the Brumbies finally reached the coast, Draculaura was surprised to see that the furious storm had completely vanished. Once more, the sky was clear without a single cloud. The waves were rougher than she remembered from her first visit with Claudine, but not nearly as dangerous as they had been during the tropical cyclone. Jackalora slid off her brumby and threw her arm around its neck. Thanks for the ride, she whispered near its ear as she gave it one last hug. The brumby tossed its mane, pawed at the sand, and then began to gallop back to the opposite direction. The other brumbies followed, and the ghouls watched until the horses were enveloped in a cloud of dust, then gone from sight. Back to the beach, Cleo cheered as she knelt down and scooped up a handful of sand. I never thought I'd be this happy to see the ocean again. Me too, Jackalora replied. That was a big detour, but at least we're back on track now. Yeah, added Claudine. Operations Go Get Laguna is back in action. Jackalora gra glanced around, except for the four ghouls at the beach was deserted. I guess all... The Normies are still waiting out of the storm, she said. They could come back at any moment, Cleo said, a note of worry in her voice. You're right. Let's get back to the ocean, Claudine said. Maybe we could find the dolphin again. She might be able to lead us to Laguna now. That the storm that the storm is over. Frankie Ben began expecting her wetsuit. Gotta make sure there ain't any rips or tears, she said. After a day we had you can't be too careful. I don't want to rush you or anything, Cleo spoke up. But the weather is getting better and better. I bet the normies will show up any minute. I'll go fast as I can, Frankie promised. Ugh, ghouls, Claudine began. Don't freak or anything, but I think... I think you're already... I think they're already here. Check it out. When the other ghouls looked out towards the horizon, Dracolora's heart sank. There was someone in the ocean, after all. Where did she come from? Dracolora wondered. The Normie hadn't been there just moments ago. Wait a minute, Dracolora thought as she narrowed her eyes. The waves sweeled. The figure crouched on a surfboard, stood up with perfect balance. Her blonde hair was streaking with blue highlights that were just a shade darker than her skin. And that was when Dracolora knew. Laguna, she screamed. Chapter 12. And this is the last chapter. Dracolora, Cleo, Claudine, and Frankie raced down to the edge of the ocean, never taking their eyes off the ghoul on the surfboard. The ghoul made it look effortlessly, even when the wave crest into the rush of swirling foam. About 20 feet from shore, she spotted Drac and her ghoul friend. She looked alarmed for about half a second, then totally exci excitement fluttered her face. She did an aerial 360 on the board, then rode the sh to the shore. Drac, ghoul friend, she cried. Is that really you, Laguna? Dracolora explained. At last, this is Claudine, and this is Frankie, and I'm Cleo. Cleo interrupted with a bright smile. Can't believe we finally found you. And I can't believe you're finally here, Laguna said. Sorry it took so long, Dracolora said. We've had a few obstacles, and they're not over yet, Drac thought to herself, but she didn't want to say those words out loud. Laguna was so happy to see them. 
Drac Lori didn't want to ruin things by telling her about the lost skillet and the challenge it would be to return to Monster High. That's dreadful, Laguna said. I'm sorry I missed you when you first arrived. I was surfing. We always try to enjoy the ocean when the normies aren't around. Oh, that reminds me. Does this belong to you? Laguna un unsnapped the pocket in her wetsuit, pulled out something that dangled from a, a thin golden chain. Jackalora blinked in disbelief. The skillet! How did you find it? She explained. The chain caught on the edge of the reef near my home, Laguna explained. When I saw it, I just knew it had to belong to you. Was it... Was it anyway? What is it anyway? It's our ticket back to Monster High, said Dracolora, laughing. It's part of Monster Mapalog, which helps us travel all over the world. I lost it when the cyclone picked us up, and well, it's a long story. I can't believe this. I never thought I'd see it again. I was starting to think I'd never see you, Laguna said as she gave Dracolora a big hug. There aren't any other monsters my age around here. I love my family, but my ghoul needs mates, too. I know exactly what you mean, Dracolora replied. Honestly, I was starting to give up hope, Laguna continued. Dracolora's face wrinkled into a frown. Did, didn't you message? see my message? She asked. Messages, Laguna repeated, her eyes widened. She shook her head. I haven't got anything from you since you announced... Your announcement at the opening of Monster High. Jack and Frankie exchanged a knowing look. We really need to try to... We really did try to reach you, Jack said. I don't know why our messages didn't make it through. Crinkly, that's not your fault, Laguna assured her. The monster web's been spotty with that storm brewing. It's not very reliable under the best circumstances anyway. Want me to take a look? Frankie offered. I might be able to fix it. That would be fantastic, Lagoon replied. Of course I want to stay in touch with my fam when I'm at Monster High. A while Frankie fixes your connection to the monster web, we can help you pack, Dracolora said. After all, that's what ghoul friends are for. Laguna started to laugh. Oh, ghoul, I'm already packed, she said. I've been ready to go since the moment I heard about Monster High. As the other ghouls joined in the laughter, Dracolora smiled. This, she thought happily, this moment is what Monster High is all about. But there is one thing we should do before we leave, Laguna suggested. What? asked Cleo. Catch some waves, Laguna announced. Well, what do you say, fancy surfing lesson from you? Dracolora explained. Fantastic. Do you have enough boards for all of us? asked Claudine. Laguna laughed. Does the Blue family have enough boards? she said. Well, there's one for my dad, one for my mom, and each of my sisters has one. And then my brothers. Dracolora and her other ghoul friends started laughing too. Come on, Laguna. Last one in the sea is Silly Creator. A sea Creator. We did it. Dracolora thought happily as she splashed into the water with Cleo, Claudine, Frankie, and Laguna. We found another student, and even more important, we made a new ghoul friend. And that was exactly what Monster High was about. And that is the end of chapter... Well, yeah, the whole book. Thank you guys for listening, and I will see you guys in the next book.